So these are our SI leaders. They are the people in the Learning Resource Center who manage the entire SI program across the college. And we do have SI coordinators that are discipline specific that work under them. And Gia Blackwell is one and Landrani Algu is the other. They are amazing. Gia also oversees our academic coaches and other aspects within the um, Learning Resource Center, including our training and development. And Andrani oversees all of the tutors and SI leaders in the LRC. Take it away, ladies. Thank you, Dean Zumo. So as Dean Zumo mentioned, we have SI in various courses across BMCC. And as you can take a look at the list, we have an ACR, F&B, Art, Business, Chem, um, CRT, Marketing, we also have um, SI leaders in BAT, MES, MMP, CSC, music. So we have a, right, a variety of SI leaders in various courses here at BNCC. Uh, we started the SI program under Dean Zumo's uh, management during the fall 2016 semester. We actually started out pretty small and then we started to, to grow. And so um, it has actually taken on a life of its own. And as Dean Zumo mentioned, it's great to work with, with faculty such as Professor Stratton, um, Professor Crago, and, and Professor Hamilton, and everybody else, um, Professor Kaiser. So it's really great to, to have a, this collaboration and to work with faculty. And I think that this is a great program and it will definitely continue to grow. So I actually uh, put together the data for two years. And so for the spring 2019 semester, we had SIs in 75 sections um, and student attendance was 2,583. We had about 60 SI leaders in the various courses and we had about 62 faculty participating in the program. For fall 2019, we had 94 sections and then we had student attendance 3,753, number of SI leaders about 56 and number of faculty about 60. For the spring 2020 semester, we had 93 sections. We had SIs in about 93 sections of various courses. Uh, student attendance was 3,440. Number of SI leaders 63 and number of faculty. We had about 70 faculty members participating in the SI program. Uh, for fall 2020, um, the number of sections dropped a little bit. We had about 75 sections of courses that had SI leaders in them, and student attendance was 3,406. Number of SI leaders we had it was about 42, and number of faculty, about 40 participating in the program. I do not have the data as yet for this semester. Um, I can tell you that we, we, I think we did have an additional sections this semester, and I will continue to monitor that as we go ahead. So... Maybe during our next training session, I will be able to share that with you. I will now turn it over to Ms. G. Blackwell. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. So I just want to give you a quick synopsis of the role of the SI leader. Um, the good thing with the SI leaders is that ideally these SI leaders are students that should have worked in your class. Um, we do have a few occasions where SI leaders do work with your colleagues in the event that you cannot find an SI leader and they are matched with you to assist students in your class. The SI leaders are, are trained. Um, not only do they assist the students with their with course content, but they also model um, excellent student behavior and also etiquette, student et etiquette and how they should um, behave inside of the classroom. So um, the, the SI leaders are there to help students process information, to bring structure to these SI sessions and keep students on task. And how they do that is depending on how you want the SI leader to work in your class. Um, and there are many ways, especially now that we're remote, um, the SI leaders can work with the students. They are to look um, at the students and work with you closely to find out difficult content. They are to take this difficult content and then they develop these outside SI sessions and they use, um, we give them planning sheets to do that. Um, they facilitate these group sessions that follow class lectures. We did a study and we got some research back. And what we found is that these SI sessions are more attended right before the class or right after the class. Now that we're in a remote environment, we'll get some more information to find out how these SI sessions um, work best. What we do find now is that some of the faculty members do ask the SI leaders to work with the students in the class. They do breakout rooms. Um, they assist the students on certain tasks 
while they are also lecturing. So there are many ways that you can utilize the SI leader inside of your class. Um, the SI leaders are to attend every online class. They are to be attentive and they're also to take notes. What we notice is that three of the most popular platforms that the uh, faculty are using is Blackboard Connect, Zoom, and also Google Meets. But depending on what your choice is, um, that's how you would, uh, the SI leaders would also follow that same platform to meet with the students. The only thing is that this, all the students should be notified of this platform and when these SI sessions are happening. So right now, I just want to share with you some differences between an SI leader and a tutor because, you know, the, the roles can uh, mirror one another, but there should be some clear distinctions. Um, the, SI the SI leader is there to focus on specific content that was lectured already in the class. So the SI leader should not be re-lecturing, should not be introducing any new material. They should be taking the difficult content, um, creating a plan, and going over that. We send the SI leaders um, different study strategies, all of the material that they need to go over this difficult content in the event that this that it does not work we ask them to be creative and introduce any any types of new strategies that they can use with the students to go over this difficult content um, whereas a tutor may focus on just the subject or the course so the tutors in the LRC are vetted by the academic departments um, and then the academic departments let us know the L Learning Resource Center what uh, courses the tutors can tutor in. So there is really, um, I'm not going to say there is faculty involvement, but it's not that close knit involvement like you would have with your SI leader. So the SI leaders know you, they know what your mission, your goals is, they know how you teach, they know how to contact you, whereas a tutor does not have that. There's a little disconnection there. Um, the SI leaders should attend all classes with the students and participate in the lectures. But as we move forward, we are going to be having different models of SI, so that can change. But basically, the SI leader will spend some time in your class, so they will know what is going on in the class to be able to best assist, assist the student. Whereas the tutors do not, they do not attend these lectures and they depend on what the student brings to them to assist them with whatever difficult content they're having um, issues with. Um, the SI leaders pre prepares content for the SI sessions based on a lecture in the course content where the tutor does not. They assist students with whatever questions they come, come to the sessions with, but they adapt to the student needs communicated at the onset of the sessions. The SI leaders schedule SI sessions based on the availability of the most students possible. So what does that mean is in the beginning of the sessions or the beginning of the course, we ask the SI leaders to poll the class. And polling the class, they should be taking or using the availability of the majority of the students. And that is the time that we ask them to make these SI sessions or to create these SI sessions. Um, in the event time goes by, let's just say two or three weeks, and you notice that the students are not attending your SI sessions, we kindly ask that you re-poll the class because things do happen to um, schedule a new SI session times, okay? So the SI sessions are based on the student's availability, whereas a tutor, when you come to a tutoring session, it's based on a tutor's availability. Um, and also the, the SI leader communicates on a regular basis with the course instructor and instructors aware of the SI session content. So that's where all of that communication um, and, and also the close work with the faculty member comes in. The faculty members knows what's happening in the SI session. They know what the, the SI leader is planning on their planning sheet. The SI leader communicates with the faculty member any concerns, any issues that may arise, any questions that the students may not communicate with the faculty member. So there's all that collaboration and the community communication, it happens there. Whereas in a tutoring session, the communication only happens if needed. And nine times out of 10, that goes through the tutor manager and that's Nandrani. So I hope that this, these two slides gave you all a, just a just of how um, well an SI leader can work for you. You can of course modify and there's flexibility of how you can use the SI leader in your course. Um, throughout the training, we do just ask you to, you know, there's just some do's, do nots that we ask of you to not um, do with the, with the SI leader. But other than that, um, there's flexibility. The SI program is a great program. And um, I hope to answer more questions as we go on in this training. Thank you.